Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue the series on Spring Framework. Now in this video, we'll focus on Spring Data JPA. So why do we need it? See, let's go back to the project which we, have, which we are doing and we have done a lot of things here and just to reiterate, basically we, have, uh, we are building this, app, this application, this is a general architecture where you have a client, in this case we are using a client as Postman, so that's our client, right? Now, we can either use a mobile application to interact with the server, we can either use a client like your uh, React application, or we can use a API tool called Postman or any other tool, using which you can send data to the server and you can get the response, and we have done that, right? The request goes to the front controller, then from that it goes to the controllers, and we do have our controller ready. So if you see, we have a product controller which has multiple mapping happening, and then this controller, if you want to do some work, any logical work, that will be forwarded, the request will go to the service. Now it is the job of a service to process any data, or if you want to calculate something, if you want to do some processing, it, everything will be done in the service layer. And service layer is expert in this thing. So when I say expert, basically you have to code it, right? So that's the job of a service layer. And then what if you want to work with database? Now at this point, we have not worked with database. You can see the data which we have, we have basically hard coded it in the service layer. Not a good idea, don't do that. We want to store this data in the database, right? So of course we have to use some database. It can be uh, H2, it can be Postgres, it can be MySQL, your choice, doesn't matter. We can even switch this DBMS uh, when we want to do that. But let's say I want to work with H2 here, right? So when I have all these layers, I mean, when I, when I have a service layer, controller layer, they're doing their job. And now I want to talk to the database. Now that's where we have to work with the repository layer. This R here is your repository layer. Now, the job of repository is to connect with the data database, okay? So let's say if a client says, hey, you know, I want all the products. So request goes to the controller. Controller says, okay, I want all the products. It will ask this service. Now, till this point, we are hard coding it, right? But now what I want is I want this data to be coming from database. And to do that, we have to do the coding in the repository layer. So this is where we have to do all the coding. Now, if you go back to the old days, the way you work with the repository layer is this. Basically, we have to use something called JDBC, which stands for Java Database Connectivity. Now, using this JDBC, we can basically connect the Java code with the help of database, with the, with the database, right? And to do that, we have to write seven steps. Now, it goes in multiple ways. Basically, you have to uh, load the driver. We have to connect to the database or DBMS, then you have to basically uh, create a query because when you talk about DBMS, it, uh, we're talking about relational data databases here, we have to use something called SQL. So we have to create the query, we have to execute the query, then it will give you some results which you have to process and then that's how you basically work, right? You have to follow seven steps. And all this code, I know we have to write lengthy code. This will be done in the repository layer. So basically this is where you have to do all those things. Now things got a bit simpler with the help of uh, Spring JDBC. Now there's something called Spring JDBC inside Spring Framework. You can use this and it will help you to uh, reduce the number of lines you have. It will make it more standard to reduce the bugs. And it's good. So instead of using normal JDBC, we can use Spring JDBC. It will help you with the uh, JDBC template. It's good. But what if you want to make it more easy? See, ultimately, if you want to just send data from your uh, service layer to database layer, because what we are doing in this application is just mostly CRUD, right? So if you just want to use CRUD, which is create, read, update, delete, uh, we can use some easy way to do that. And that something can be done with ORM. So there's a concept of ORM, which stands for object relational mapping, okay? So what we are doing is we have objects. So in the Java world, everything is object, right? So if you talk about a laptop, if you talk about anything, anything you want to represent, even humans in the Java world are objects. Bad thing, but yeah. So everything in the Java world is object because it's an object-oriented programming. So if I want to represent this remote, that's a object. If I want to represent maybe uh, this bottle, that's an object, right? Everything is an object. And the way you create object is with the help of class. So first thing you do is you create a class, which is a blueprint. And then from that class, you create the object, if that makes sense. Now this object will have two things. The object will have the data. Uh, so the object, 
will have the data and the object will have the behavior with the help of methods. So in this case, we don't want to talk about methods. Let's focus only on the data. Now, when you say data, what data we have? So basically we have, uh, example, let's talk, let's talk about this product here. Now, if you go back to any particular product, which we have it here, a product will have the product ID, a product will have a product name, it will have the price, right? This is the data I'm talking about. So every object will have a data. So in this case, we got uh, product ID, we got product name, and we got price, right? So we got these three things. This is the data I'm talking about. This is the Java world. In the database world, what we do is we have a table, right? We have a table structure. Now this table will have a name, so table name. Uh, then this table will have the number of columns and they will have a column names, right? And then they have data as well. So each data will be one row. So this is the RDBMS world. This is the object world. Now what we want to do is we want to basically connect them. We want to map them. That is object. So this is object. These are called relations and we have to basically map them. And if you can do that, that's ORM. Now, how do we map it? It's very, very simple, right? When we talk about object, object has data, as I mentioned before. So just an example, the object will have data. So example, we got uh, the ID, I will say PID, and the, the ID we have is 101. Then let's say we have a name for the product, I will say P name, which is iPhone in this case. And then we got a price, and the price is 50,000. So if you can see this data is stored in that particular object, right? Here is the object. I want to store this data in the table. Of course, you can write the queries. Uh, if you are familiar with SQL, uh, we have something called insert query. So you say insert into product table where, uh, not where, but values are this 101, iPhone, 5000, you can do that. But what if you don't want to write the queries? I mean, think about this. You just have to learn Java. You don't need to learn any other, other language. I'm, I'm talking about SQL here. So can we do that? So yes, that's where we can use ORM, who simply says, hey, you know, give me the object. It's my responsibility to store that in database. So it will basically convert your, or not convert, but translate your object into SQL query. And then you can save that in database. So your object data here becomes one row. So 101 goes here, the P name, iPhone goes here and your price goes here. So that's your one row. If you have multiple objects, you will get multiple rows. But the question still remains, who is responsible to create the table? Who is responsible to specify the number of columns? Who is responsible to name the columns? Are we going to do it? What if I say you don't have to do it? Someone else will take care of it. And who is that someone else? Of course, the ORM tool. So basically we have to use some tool to make it work. Now that tool, is it a magician to know everything? See, the thing is the table name can be, we can get the table name from the class name, right? We have a class name product. So we, if you can see, we do have a class called product, right? So we can get the class name as your table name. What about the columns? Each variable becomes a column. We got the column as product ID. We got the column as product name. We got the column as price. So the whatever uh, variables you have, you make them the, the column names. And what about the rows? Each object is one row. So if you have 10 objects of 10 different products, you will get 10 rows. That's how basically you do the mapping. And who is responsible to do all those things for you is the ORM tool. Examples, we got uh, Hibernate is a very famous one. Uh, we got Eclipse Link. Uh, we also got MyBetis. MyBetis is not fully ORM, but yeah, you can use it. Uh, but the most famous one is Hibernate. It's full-fledged. Uh, ORM tool and it, you will find everything there. So this is a good one, good tool to use. So we got Hibernate. But we, if you see the title of the video, it talks about JPA, not Hibernate, right? So why? See, the thing is Hibernate is a good tool, but let's say in future, you want to move from Hibernate to some other tool. You basically have to do a lot of changes to your code. It's because all these tools don't follow the same standard, or maybe they are, but how they are following the same standard. So what we got is we got something called JPA, which stands for Java Persistence API. So JPA are just standards and Hibernate basically implements those standards. Eclipse Links basically implements those standards, right? So all the most of the ORM tools implement JPA standards. So in future, if you want to move from Hibernate to Eclipse Link, it will be easier. Imagine if you do, if you know how to drive one car, it is easy to drive other cars because they follow the same standards. Right? That's why we have something called JPA. Now in the world of Spring, now Spring since it's a big project, it's got a lot of modules inside it. They got a special 
tool or special module called Spring Data. Now when you talk about Spring Data, it deals with data, but we want to specifically mention I want to use JPA. So the module name becomes Spring Data JPA. And when we use it, the storing of the data in the database becomes very, very easy. Okay, you will see that in the upcoming videos. But I just wanted to give you the walkthrough, what are we going to do and why JPA is so important. So with the help of Spring Data JPA, we can store this data which we are doing in this service layer in the database. Which, DB, which database we are going to use? We are going to use H2, which is an uh, in-memory database, easy to set up, easy to use, and for learning purposes, it's a good tool. So we are going to use H2, and we are going to use Spring Data JPA to store this data in the database and to fetch data. It will be fun and easy to work with. And yeah, that's it from this video where we talked about the theory of Spring Data JPA. How do we implement that? Let's see that in the next video. Bye-bye.